is on the 15th to the 18th of January. And we meet here at 7 p.m. weekly. Our youth department meeting is on Friday 19th. And again, I see your beautiful faces on Sunday the 25th of January. So, I would like to bring our speaker on. We have a special this morning, I was just told, Keisha. Can we give her a round of applause? Good morning, everyone. It's nice to be in the house of God this morning to fellowship and to worship with my fellow brethren. Um, most of you all here last week, and you remember my testimony where I said that 2024 was 2023 was a very, very tough year for me. It was difficult. I have no idea how I'm standing here today, see Um Earlier on the 2023, I would have been diagnosed with major depression and anxiety. And yes, Christians do get depressed. Christians do have anxiety. Christians do, you know, they, they go through things like everyone else in the world. But the difference is, we go through it with Jesus. And you know, I'm thankful to God because God has done a lot for me. He has taken me through so much in life. And you know, being able to stand here and to talk about how good he is, that in itself is a privilege to be able to post about how good God could be and how good he is once you do what you are supposed to do. You know, and not all times we are faithful. Not all times we do the correct thing. We stumble, we fall. You know, we are just humans, but God is always there to pick us up. He's always there to dust us off. He loves us. And you know, I'm grateful for the love of God. I'm grateful to be here. Um, in this church where I grew up. You know, one thing I always say is I have I have visited other churches and you know, I have experienced other churches and other congregations and so and I have never experienced a church that gives a lot like I have been. You all they see that word I have been or they take that little or they take that to half a little wrong with that. And you know, I'm thankful that I have that from you guys. So this morning I'm going to sing a song to minister to you all. Because like I said, I lost my song when I found it in 2020, but I'm not for that.
and it was done. So I'm going to look at some of the scriptures, not all. When I researched it in King James Version, and God said up here 36 times, and most of those times were in the Old Testament. So I'm just going to look at some of them. In Genesis 1, 3, God, it says, And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. So if you look at it in like two portions, And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. Light didn't have to argue and say, You sure? I should try no? No. God said, Let there be light, and there was light. Light obeyed because He is light, and light obeyed. And then in Genesis 1 11, Hallelujah. Genesis 1 11, and God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after its kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And it was so. So whatever God said, it was so. He said, let there be light, and there was light. And he spoke to the tree, he, he, he spoke what he wanted, and the end of the verse said, and it was so. In Genesis 1, 14 and 15, and God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons, and for days and for years. So we see what the lights in the sky, what God ordained them to be for. The stars, the moon, the sun. He said, let them be for let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years. Some people carry it up big extreme. They follow the sun, follow the stars, but God gave it to us for a purpose. And verse 15 said, let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven, to give light upon the earth, and it was so. The sun, the moon, and the stars, they were only to light the earth, and they were for signs and seasons on the earth, because where God is, he doesn't need seasons. He doesn't need, he doesn't need seasons because He's the one who created everything. He lives outside of time. We live in time. So we need the sun, the stars, the moon, all these things to set our calendar, to set the days, to set the seasons. We need those things. But God doesn't need it where he is. So it was for the earth. In 2 Chronicles 1, 7, when God appeared to Solomon, and he said unto him, Ask. He said, ask what I shall give you. And Solomon didn't ask for riches. You can read the story. I'm not sure if I have all the scriptures there. But this is a long story. Not a story. It's recorded in the Bible, so it's true. It's not a story. So God appeared to Solomon and he told Solomon, ask for what you want me to give you. And Solomon, being Solomon, did not ask for riches. It was me probably already saying, you can give me a million dollars or a nice house or you know something like that. But Solomon did not ask for any of those things. Solomon asked for wisdom and knowledge to rule God's people. And I like this because Solomon recognized that the people belong to God. He asked for wisdom and knowledge to rule God's people. And in verse 10, or oh, he did not in verse 10, verse 11, he didn't ask God to be able to conquer his enemies, it says in verse 11, nor for long life for himself so he can rule forever. You can remember he was talking to God. God said, ask what you want me to give you. So I could have said, I could live forever so I rule these people and I'll be king all the time. But Solomon didn't ask for that. He didn't ask for long life for himself to rule over God's people and do anything. He knew that God made him king to rule over his people, over God's people. And you know I like that about Solomon. And if we look at this, we know that, you know, God said, ask what you want me to do. And Solomon asked, and then God said, all right, let us pull straws, and if you get the longer straw, then you will get it. No. When God says something, he does it. When he promises something, he gives it to us. 
Once he said it or once he promised it, it is so. That is something that I am putting great emphasis on in my life. What God has said. Because I know what God says, he doesn't take it back. And whatever he says, it will happen. It will be done. So we see when God speaks, it is done. There is no argument, no discussion. His word contains all things necessary for his will to be fulfilled. God's word is spirit and life. His word contains whatever he says. His word contains whatever is needed for what he said to come to pass. By choosing to speak, God lets us know how powerful words are and the potential words have for building and creating. Do you know that words build? Words build up. If I say something bad to Sister Donna, that will not build her up. But if I say something good to her, but words create, whatever you say, it's created. Whether you say something bad or you say something good, words have power to create. So I want us to be careful what we say, how we say it, and what we say. Keep in mind that whatever you say, you are creating something. It's, it will not just blow away with the wind. We are creating something by whatever we say. And what God says or command is not temporary, but it is eternal. God's word is eternal. The words he speaks to call light into existence still produce light now until he recalls them if he chooses. He's God. If he wants to recall back, take, change his words and say something else. But the light, when he said light be, light continues to function all now. And that is, I'm not going to say how it from, I don't know exactly, from some people say over 2,000 years ago, okay, and the light still functions, just as God said it, he didn't have to patch up, he just said light, yeah, the light functions just as he ordained it, he doesn't have to, like something happen when we create something or when we do something, you saw something and then you get a rip, you have to repair it. God created the universe, he created the stars, the moon, everything. There was no tear. There was nothing that he had to repair from the things that he said. So whatever he says, it stands just as he said. Amen. If he wants to recall anyone, it's his choice. He is God. So this morning I'm asking a question. What has God said to you? Or what has he been saying to you? Sometimes we think that God, when we need to hear what God says, we just need, like how I'm speaking to you and you can hear with your ear. Sometimes we think that is the only way we can hear from God to know what he wants us to do. But he says what he wants for us and what he wants us to do through his word. So what has he been saying to us? Or what has he been saying to you? You have to find out what he's been saying to you. And I have to know what he's been saying to me. And from before when I read those other scriptures, we know that whatever God says always comes to pass. Because he provides whatever is needed for that to come to pass. As he said something to you, given you direction in your life, he has already prepared for that to be fulfilled. Whatever it is he said to you, he has already made provision for that to be fulfilled. Do not doubt him. Okay? So we know what he's saying by his word. And, you know, sometimes you tell people, what you're trying to tell me? Yeah. But we can't do that with God. We can't ask God what you're trying to say. He says what he has to say, and it is done. So we need to tune in our channel. Just like how you tune in, you want to get 98.1 on the radio. You don't just say 98.1. You have to turn the dial because there are so many other channels that you can listen to or that could drop in on you. So you turn the channel to the one you want to hear, the specific one you want to hear, and you hear that one. So we have to tune our ears and our hearts to listen and to know when God is speaking to us and what it is he's saying to us. As his children, we are equipped to hear his voice. We just need to tune in 
and to block out all the other influence. Sometimes if you, some people think that to hear or to meditate on God, you need dead silence. No. Well, for me, no. I can be in a crowd. I can be somewhere where they are playing, where you know all different kind of music and different things coming at you, and still I can meditate and talk to God and listen to His voice talking back to me. And you know that's how it should be, because the world today is so so busy. There are so many things coming at us, so many different voices, so many different thoughts coming at us. So we need to keep our mind focused on God. So that we hear what he is saying to us. If I put, if I take this book and I put it in front of me like this, I can only see the book. So I block out. Well, I'm not going here. I block out all other issues because I put the book. This is what I want to see, so I put it in front of me, and this is what I see. So you know that's how we have to do when, not only when we have trouble. Anytime God is available every every time and he's not available to some specific people not preachers not pastors not you know not specific people he's available to all of us and he can hear us anytime could be daytime could be nighttime anytime god can hear us you could be in your bathroom god hearing he created us don't feel ashamed to talk to him or to reach out to him anywhere you are he wants to hear from us and he wants us to hear him. In 1 Corinthians 2.14 it says, I'm going to read it. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit, the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. So when we want to hear from God, we don't look to natural means to hear from God. We don't look to natural means. If before we, before someone is saved, they cannot understand. They might hear with their outer ear. Somebody read a scripture or something, I don't hear. Because we have ears. But being a natural person, being somebody who is not saved, you can't understand the things of God. It will sound like foolishness. When you're outside in the world, somebody might tell you, no, God, good, he did this and he did that for me. And the person outside might say, he would hear it, but he wouldn't understand. He would not have that connection because he cannot discern the word of God. So even if we, even when we talk to them and tell them about the things of God, they would not understand until they come into fellowship with God and they accept Lord as Savior and they understand there would be understanding because as I said, God has given us everything. He has provided a way that we can understand his word through his Holy Spirit. His words are spirit and they are life. John 6, 33 says that. That the words of God are spirit and life. So to understand his words, we need the Holy Spirit to help us. The things of God can only be discerned through the spirit, as I said. The things he has spoken to us can only be accessed spiritually. Spiritual things cannot be accessed through physical means. You know, um, things that God said, like if I'm, I'm going to use one example, I love to talk about healing. I don't know why, I love to talk about healing and pray for somebody who is sick. So the word of God says, by Jesus' stripes you will heal. That's what the word of God says, that is spirit. And that is life. So you might get sick, yes. You might feel pain, but you know at the back of your mind that God's word says, by his stripes you are healed. So God's word always stands. A couple of weeks ago, about two weeks ago, I was not feeling well. I had um I didn't have fever, it was just like cold. And most of the time I don't like to take natural medicine. And I was praying, and it was like if um, God said to me, he said, you are already healed. He said, even if you take the medication, that is not what is healing you. You are already healed. So don't have, I did not have any fear. I took Panadol, you know, stuff like that to ease the help, bring me up to 
where I thought, because God already said that I was healed. So it's not the Panadol that healed me. It's not, you know, we take vitamins and things because we live on the earth, our body needs all that. But it's not that that is keeping us. It's the word of God that is keeping us. But do not be, for me, I didn't have a fear of taking it. I just did not like to take medication. So I would say I'm sitting and I'm depending on God to heal me. So no matter what pain or whatever, I depend on God to heal me. And I took that medication and knowing in the fact, knowing in the back of my mind that I am already healed. God said it in his word and it is so. Faith is one of the means of accessing what God has sent us. What he has provided for us. We can access that through faith. Because once he says it, it is real. Once we are looking through physical means, through physical eyes, we are not looking through eyes of faith. Once you can see it, once you're looking for the evidence with your eyes, your natural eyes, you are not looking through the eyes of faith. If you're looking through the eyes of faith, you can take what the word of God says as truth, because it is. Whether you've seen it or you've not seen it, what God says is true. So faith takes what God says to us as true, even though we are not seeing it. Things are made and not seen can only be accessed through faith, but it is real because God said it. It's just that we can't see it with our eyes because they are unseen. But He said it, so it is real. So if we want to possess them, then we have to get into the Word, we have to know what the Word says and apply that to our situation. When we don't take Jesus at His Word, we are saying that He speaks on truth or He's telling lies. That is serious. When we don't take Jesus at his word, we are saying that he is speaking on truth. Because the Bible said that the word of God is spirit, it is truth, it is life. God is truth. It's not fact. God is not a fact. He is truth. His words, the words that he speaks, they are truth. So when we don't believe what he said, we say, well, that's not true. When you say something is not true, what do you say? It is a lie. But the word of God is true. Second Corinthians 1 20 says, For all the promises of God in him are yea, and in him, amen, unto the glory of God by us. So the yes to all of God's promises is in Jesus Christ. That's why we can be assured that they are true. true. And I thank God that his promises don't have to we don't have to agree. No, I shouldn't say it like that. God's promises are his promises. Whether we agree with it or we don't agree with it, it is true. It stands as it said. So, but when we agree with it, when we use faith, it can apply to us. That doesn't mean if we are not experiencing what God says as yet, that doesn't mean that what he said is not true or what he said is invalid. It's just that we are not applying faith to receive or to believe what he has said to us. And that's why his promises are yes and amen in Jesus Christ, not in us. Hebrews 10, 23 says, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. For he is promised, for he who promised is faithful. So, the person who promised us these things in the Bible, he is faithful. Amen. That means that he will do it. Because of him being faithful, he promised it, he will do it. Trinidad then to say, put your pot on the fire. If God say, he said it, you have stuff to eat, he said it, food for you. He said it, somebody with rice, put your pot on the fire. Let the water start to boil and rice will come. What he says, he keeps his word. Because he is faithful. If you never, if you don't know that God is faithful, I don't like to say the try God. And I know I hear people saying the try. But if you don't know that God is faithful, try him. Prove God. That's a better thing to say. Prove him 
that what he says in his word is true. And he will always come true for us. In 2 Peter 1, 3, it says that God has already given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. He has already provided it. If he gave us all at once, if I had some money for, like I'm, not even if I'm dying, but if I had some money to give to one of my children, and I told them, you know, I have a million dollars to give you, but and they wanted it like they probably got some. He wanted to share one time, but what did he do with it? He didn't do anything with it. He just blew it off, and then he had nothing after a while. God has given us everything that pertains to life and godliness. Everything. And I think everything means everything. Especially if it is in the way. Everything. All things that pertain to life and godliness. You know, healing is one of the promises. Protection is another promise. He's constantly protecting us. Constantly providing for us. And recently I was looking at words that end in I-N-G. That means it's continuing. Healing. He's continually healing us. Providing. He's continually providing. In our sense, he is continually providing. But on his side, he has already done it. He has nothing more to do. He said, when Jesus saw many he said, it is finished. Amen. He had nothing else to do. But because we live in time, it's constantly happening. We are being healed every day. We are being healed. We are being provided for. We are being protected. Sometimes we don't know what we are being protected from. But every day, God is protecting us. By his power, he's healing, protecting, providing for us. And he lives, as I said, he lives outside of time. So he, it is just done. It's hard to understand for us as mere man to understand who God is and what he does. He sees the whole, the whole picture. We are in 2024. He saw 2024 the first time from since he saw what was the first year? Whatever the first year was, God saw 2024 at that time. That's how big God is. It's hard for us with our mind to understand. But to know that God sees everything, knows everything, it's easy. But it's for me, I would want to put my faith and my trust in somebody who knows what's coming tomorrow. We don't know what is coming tomorrow, but he already knows. So it's easy to put our faith and our trust in him. And we live by the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God lives in us and helps us to access the benefits that God has provided for us. So it's a continual process for us, not for God. Another provision of God to us is to live eternally with him. Eternal life. And you know, um, when I was young, I would think eternal life is when you go to heaven. That's when you start eternal life. But eternal life doesn't begin when we get to heaven. Eternal life begins here. When we accept the Lord as our Savior, you have started eternal life. And you know, I, this scripture in John 17, 13, I think it is. My do I have now? John 73. Yes. I didn't understand my own handwriting. <laughs> and this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. So you see, this is eternal life. Amen. Eternal life is not just living forever. Eternal life is knowing God and knowing Jesus Christ. When we know God and know Jesus Christ, we have eternal life. So only knowing the true and living God and knowing Jesus Christ who he sent to the earth to show us how to live this life, then we have eternal life. 
Jesus came to the earth as the last Adam. The Bible calls him the last Adam. If there is a last Adam, there was a first Adam. And one thing I noticed about both Jesus and Adam is that they did not have earthly fathers. Adam didn't have a father. Jesus didn't have a father. And both were, they did not have earthly fathers, but they were given free will to choose. Adam had free will to choose. God told him, do not eat. He had free will to choose. God did not create a robot, or else all of we would be robots. Thank you, Lord. So Adam had choice. Just as Jesus had choice. When Jesus walked the earth, he was sinless. He had choice. He could have, because he was born as a babe. He, didn't, he was not born when he reached 30 years. He was born as a babe. He had to be obedient to his parents. He went to church. He went to read, to read in the temple. But he lived on the earth as a man. He didn't have any outside help from God to live on the earth. He came to show us how it is, how we could live just as he lived in communication with God. God is our Father now. God is his Father. He showed us how we could live in communication with God. And when he was baptized, the Holy Spirit rested upon him. That's what the word says. Like a dove, it rests upon him. He chose not to live. He chose to live above sin. He lived through prayer, talking with God, and through the power of the Holy Spirit. John 1, 20, 32 says, And John bear record, saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove. He didn't say it was a dove. Just like how he said it like a dove. And it abode upon him. The Holy Spirit did not manifest, it did not go in Jesus, like how we have the Holy Spirit living in us now. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. When Jesus was here, the Holy Spirit rested upon him. Only when he went back to heaven, he said he could send the Holy Spirit, he would send him back, and then he would come live in us. But Jesus still was obedient to what his father told him to do. What God told him, he knew what God wanted him to do, and that is what he did. Through the power of the Holy Spirit and through prayer. So, you know, we have that same, the Bible says, the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwell in us. It will quicken our mortal bodies. That same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, that is power. We will quicken our mortal bodies by the same spirit, not a different spirit. And Jesus told his disciples, if I don't go, I cannot send them back. So Jesus went up to heaven to his Father and he sent the Holy Spirit to dwell in each one of us. So that's how our bodies become the temple of the living God, through the indwelling of God's Spirit. And because of the Holy Spirit, that is why we can lay hands on the sick and see them recover. We can pray and see results. We can talk to God. The Bible says we do not have because we do not ask. A lot of us think it's hard to ask for something. You know? So what has God, what has he told us to do? What is he speaking to us about? Even if you know what he's speaking to you about, you can still ask. You can ask the question, you know. You don't only really ask for things. If you ask God, He gave us the Holy Spirit to teach us, to lead us, to guide us. So if we ask if you cannot understand something from the Bible and you want to understand, you ask God and the Holy Spirit will help you understand. So the thing that He has seen to us, that He is saying to us, He has equipped us to do it by the Holy Spirit who dwells in us. So it's not that He is sending us to do stuff without, not on our own. He is equipping us to do what he has called us to do, what he has sent us to do. And I know sometimes we think, 
it's only like preaching and stuff like that that God called us to do. A teacher, if you're a teacher in a primary school or secondary school, that is ability that came from God. And he has equipped you to do it, to function. The children might be maybe given you trouble, different things would happen, but God has given you the grace to do that. If that is what he's called you to do, that is what he's provided for you to do it. And I thank God that the Holy Spirit helps, he guides, he strengthens. The Holy Spirit is God. He knows everything just as God the Father knows everything. He knows everything. He sees everything. So don't be afraid. God is looking out for each and every one of us. And he is willing and able to help us to do what he has called us to do. If it's to shine shoes, if it's to be a hairdresser or whatever, it doesn't matter. He loves each and every one of us and each and every one is important in the kingdom of God. So whatever he's telling you to do, don't say, be sure, I can't do that or feel intimidated by other people who are doing what he's called you to. Whatever he's called us to do, do it with all your mind, knowing that you have the strongest backing you can have. God is backing you. Because he loves you. He didn't call you to do it because he knew you could do it. When I say he knew you could do it, it didn't come natural for you to do it. But he called you to do it so that you will depend on him and on his spirit to fulfill what he called you to do. God and you as a majority. God and me as a majority. So whatever he has called us to do, don't be afraid. Just do it, but depend on him. Don't do it in yourself. Converse, ask him, talk with him before you go ahead and do it, and you will see. You will do it. You will come on victorious. So that is my short message. And Father God, we just thank you today. Father, what you have placed within our hearts, the things that you have called us to do. Father, we might think sometimes that it's our own thoughts. But Father, we thank you, O oh God, that you speak. You still speak. And when you speak, things happen, O oh God. So Father, we commit our ways, we commit our thoughts, we commit everything that we are unto you, and we depend upon you, our God, our Father, who knows us and who knows everything. We depend upon you and look to you for leading and for guiding us into all truth and righteousness. In Jesus' name. This is We're going to pray for Sister Zelma. Sister Zelma is not here because she was not feeling well. So they took her to the doctor this morning. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the doctor that you had already prepared to see Sister Zelma, oh God. We thank you for whatever dear diagnosis is, oh God. We thank you for it. And we thank you for what your word says, oh God. Father, we pray, we declare healing to her body, head to toe, in the name of Jesus. You are the God who knows her body, oh God. Even before she started feeling sick, oh God, you knew, oh God. And Father, we commit unto you, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for healing. We thank you for her body being restored back to health because of your spirit and because of your power, in the name of Jesus. Father, we... No sickness didn't come from you, but you are able to heal. You are able to eradicate, oh God. You are able to strengthen. So we lift her up before you, and we thank you for strengthening her and for keeping her. And we pray, oh God, even if it's part of this virus that is going around now, that is spreading like wildfire among family members and friends, we come against it in the name of Jesus. Spirits of it. Infirmity, leave in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You have no authority over God's people. Leave and do not return in the name of Jesus. Father, we receive your strength, we receive your health, we receive all that you have provided and given to us, O oh God. And we resist what Satan sent our way in Jesus' name. Amen. There's a song that 
Thank you. 